Start with Steve McNulty then. John, what's, what's, uh, what's arose? Um, it's been a, a couple of weeks now. Um, he's got two children. Um, I think one of them has sort of not been particularly well, I think. And I think that it's, that all things, um, his wife is concerned about, you know, the, the way the situation is. It's never been a problem before, but it, it has been a problem of late. Uh, well, we, we sat down with him, um, I think two weeks ago, maybe a touch longer, and we, it was causing a problem. Um, but we left it a week and reviewed it, then left it a, 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 a week and reviewed it, but the situation wasn't, you know, particularly good. It was, it was affecting him and affecting her. With that in mind, um, we um, spoke to Gary Brabin at, at Tranmere and told him the situation about it wasn't a case of him going sort of back that way, it was close to him going back near home, which is 10 minutes from home for him. Um, and in the end, uh, we decided, everyone decided it was in everyone's best interest that, that this happens. Um, but, you know, disappointed for us, but in a funny way, pleased for him because it, it, it was, I wouldn't say that it had actually uh, affected him, um, but he wouldn't have played Saturday, he'd have gone home. Um, I mean, we agreed something with, with Tramia, we didn't play for them Saturday. Uh, he went home, yeah, so you know, a few few days just settling things back there a bit. And uh, it was one of the things that, I wouldn't say it was exactly the same as, as Mark Cullen, who his wife hadn't really settled in the area and wanted to go back. It was different, you know. To Steve's family wasn't here. Um, if he was sort of 21, 22, 23, 24, it's easy, not easy, but easier to move your family. But he's 31, 15, probably not the right time to move family. Um, so it was a case that really it was something that he felt we had to do. Um, and when we listen to him and, you know, we've got to know him really well. Uh, for him personally, um, it's, it's the right thing for him to do. And, um, I, I, you know, I felt, I think the club felt we had to show the right amount of compassion to his situation. So, that's where it is. Mm. So, so you didn't want him to leave? No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. no. It, it, it was yeah. to say, it was never a case of that. It was a case of uh, him coming to us and... Uh, and I'm sure if you speak, and I'm sure you will speak to Steve, he was he loved it at Luton. Uh, he enjoyed everything about what we'd done at Luton. And he was absolutely gutted to leave Luton. But he felt his family has to come first, quite rightly, quite rightly, 100% uh, right. Um, and he was at an age where and moving his family probably wasn't mm. the best thing to do, scores and things. So, as I say, um, it's just one of the things, one of the things that happens, you know, not in football, it happens in life, you know, I think you, you know, your family is your most important possession and um, he, he, I think he, he understands that and, you know, it's really weird, even on the day of game, he didn't want to go, mm. but I think it's just one of the things. How big a loss is he going to be? Because on on the pitch he was a leader. He was a leader yeah. off the pitch, you know. No, absolutely, um, big part of Luton. Of course, in my time, he had been a, a, a big part of you know getting up and establishing just last year as a you know a good club, you know, off, on on the pitch. So you, you you do, but you know this is football, and you know the king is dead. Long live the king! I mean, Steve's done an unbelievable job here. Fantastic! You know, I really mean it's a fantastic job. Uh, here and be, be you know became you know quite rightly a little bit of a cult hero and and you know because of his his ability uh, which I think you know people that don't really know him are quite shocked yeah. at how good a player he really is um, and I think we're all you know been delighted with, with his performances his performances here so he'll be a loss. But, you know, it's like every door that closes, it opens for someone else to come in and be that character or for 
someone else to to impose their self on it because it's you know difficult to impose yourself when there's someone more imposing if that makes sense so you know that's something that you know we, we need to look at and 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 sort of try and push people through to impose their self uh, and we, we have some some big characters and we have some good characters and you know their character has to start coming through a bit more now I suppose maybe a bit of a surprise is that Magnus Akungai has gone out on loan because you're now <laughs> perhaps a little bit light no we've got three centre arts so mm. we're okay Magnus wouldn't be ready to play Magnus no. is fit now mm. he's fit uh, and uh, we've spoken Hartley Paul spoken to us the previous before the Steve thing came up and you know I've having spoken to him he felt that he was fit in terms of injury free mm. but he played against Gillingham and he said he really felt uncomfortable during the game you know the pace of the game and, and whatever and I think that he felt that he didn't want to put himself in a position didn't want to be in a position where because he's injury free he had to play without being a hundred percent ready and he felt and we felt that the loan thing would would be a big benefit to him to get him back here when he does feel comfortable playing now we explained that to Hartley Paul but they literally didn't have anything yeah. and so they wanted they would take that chance but Magnus was a bit reluctant to take that chance, if you like. He felt he needed to play. Um, having seen him at Gillingham and training, we felt that he was ready to, to go and play regular now uh, and come back, you know, in a month's time, all guns blazing. So we felt that we couldn't have done it if we didn't have Mark O'Brien, but we, we have. Uh, we've also got Danny Potts that can play there. Mm. So we, we thought it was the right thing to do. Got uh, a big week. This week, two home games. Name a week, that ain't a big week. Um, yeah, it is. It's um, yeah, two home games and two good games. So looking forward to that. You know, we've had a, a good run with. You know what? It's really weird, Saturday, because we we played how I would expect us to play in the first half. I was really pleased. We limited them, I think, to one shot off target. I was really pleased. In the second half, we were shocking. Um, we just spoke about. I didn't see it coming. We don't know why spoke with players, they were in great spirits. We trained last week, and this might sound really stupid, <laughs> but players, a staff me said, best training session, best week of training since we've been here. Everyone was sharp, everyone was bright, everyone was lively, everyone. That's people playing and not playing. So we didn't see it coming, I really didn't. Um, I was really disappointed with the, the first goal. Can't do nothing about the second goal, to be honest. But really disappointed with the defending for this first goal but really disappointed with the quality of our football in, in the second half um, players never played you know it was like switching the light off from the first half to the second half it really was so it was really disappointing um, but this being football we have a chance to rectify that you know pretty quickly tomorrow